Obviously, uh, we are preparing for game week. Mock game today. We're one week out, so we're going to go at night and try to give our guys a, a pregame experience. Uh, one of the big emphases that we have always had is making sure, especially with two new coaches, is making sure players are not concerned about routine once they prepare to play. And, and we probably give an inordinate amount of effort and uh, thought to making sure that uh, uh, when the foot hits the ball, our guys are ready to go and not worried uh, uh, about silly things, about tickets to uh, what you wear, how you get dressed, how you get taped, what you eat. And so we're going to do the best we can to eliminate all that. The good thing is for the mature team coming back, uh, it is what it is. For the young guys, we just want to make sure they're right. So the quarterback situation, uh, uh, we'll announce the starter when the first guy takes a snap. Um, it's still very close. Both guys are performing very well. Braxton has really had the last two days have been outstanding. He's the whole idea of his body getting used to basically a track practice every day is, is uh, taking root. So he's he had a really good two days. And um, I'll answer any questions for you. Little up far right, Austin. Uh, Urban, I'm sorry that I've asked this question for like nine months about the quarterbacks, but to what, at what point do you need to know to start implementing a game plan, even if you don't plan to announce until Monday? No, there, if it was different skill sets, it'd probably, uh, but they're not. And we, you know, if you look at uh, JT's game plan when he was our quarterback in Cardell's, it was this. It's very similar. So. Um, and, and then there's a you know whether there's a chance they'll both play as well, so that hasn't really you know in our mindset we're game planning our offense and they're both executed very well. Do you think that there's value to keeping that information in house just from Virginia Tech's perspective to keep have them prepared for both of them? Not really, because I, once again I think they're very similar. You know I've, I've heard people say he's a much better downfield thrower, and you know I don't I, he is pretty if you're talking about Cardell is much is a very good downfield thrower, but I, I don't know I don't. I just, if, I imagined if one of them was way ahead, I'd probably announce it, but they're not. And uh, it's more for our team than the, who we're playing. Front row middle, Dave. Coach, you touched a little bit on Braxton. Um, what were your expectations when he made the transition? Has, has he exceeded expectations up to this point? I know it's early. Is he not quite where you want him to be? Or? Early on, he was, I don't want to say exceeded. I was just, because I knew there would be growing pains. You know, it's, 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 um, it's rather comical when I hear someone just play him at receiver or just go put him at corner. You know, that usually takes about a year and a half to go play, just play receiver, to do it correctly. Now, the one thing Braxton can't do, you snap him the ball, and it's, he's done that enough to go. And that, there's potential of that as well. So uh, he's, as, as of the last three days, he's, I don't want to say exceeded my expectation, but he's, he's darn near ready to go. Second row middle, Bob. Herman, you've obviously had a lot of a lot of championship teams, et cetera. And I'm just wondering, everybody always talks about all of the accolades this team is getting and all of that ever since the beginning of last season. How, is it, how have they handled kind of the trappings of success compared to other teams you've had? Have you seen anything? No, I think, I think really well. You know, and I, I made this comment year, uh, probably a month ago or maybe two months ago that there's indicators. The first indicator is that your academics and our guys have done well. There's no ineligibility issues or you know our graduation rate was I was told was the highest it's ever been at Ohio State so there's those indicators have been fine we had a couple uh, other indicators where we did take a speed bump where four guys won't play that was a that that set up the red flag to what's going on here uh, but we found out it's very isolated and then uh, work ethic in the weight room and on the field and that's that's not touchable those guys have done great so so far so good that's obviously something that you monitor really closely, I assume, with everything. Yeah, yeah probably more so because I experienced it and witnessed it, and it's it's real. I mean, not just how many Super Bowl teams have a great year after they win the Super Bowl, how many national champions have a great year after a national championship year, and um, it's tough because there are so many out, you know, so many um, outside influences that can get in, saturate your program, and just, you know, Cause damage, but we've watched it very closely, and I don't. Bob, to answer your question, I don't feel it at all. Urban, in your mind, when do you when do you think you'll decide who the quarterback will be? Even if you don't share that with everyone, we start uh, practice game week uh, tomorrow. They're off, and 
all I know is it's a Monday. It's not really a Monday, but it's whatever day of the week it is. And in the coach's mind, it's Monday, and I'll, I'll have a good idea. So two days from now, whatever day that is, in my mind, it's Monday. Does that make sense? Because a Monday's a Tuesday's a Wednesday's. If you're playing on Thursday, is a Monday. Yeah. Uh, how have these? How have those guys continued to handle it? You said that they have handled it very the well. Quarterbacks? Yes. Great. Great. They're uh, they're pros, man. And I was I'm very. I thought JT's always been a pro. Uh, I'm amazed at uh, Cardell's maturity, the way he's handling his business. It's really it's really good to see a young guy grow up. And I saw it last year, I, and it continued. To tell the guy who's not starting, who's not starting. I don't think it's going to be hard because of the way they handle it, and I've had uh, a couple conversations with already. I think it's going to be a matter of fact. And but the other guy, you're going to, if you're not going to play early, you get ready because uh, I like to see both guys involved. Far left, uh, Matt. Uh, I'm just wondering depth wise at receiver uh, going into the first game with injury and the uh, situation that you're at. How do you how do you feel? How many do you have in that rotation? How do you feel? About yeah, that? Noah's was, uh, by the way, he's doing uh, fine. He's, I think he's still in the hospital, is that right? As of the last night, he was. So maybe today or tomorrow, we're hoping to get him out. Surgery was successful. We're expecting a full recovery. Um, depth of receiver is a concern for this game. Um, talent isn't. Depth is a concern. You, Mike Thomas, you have Curtis Samuel, you have Braxton Miller, you have Johnny Dixon, you have Paris Campbell, you have uh, um, Terry McLaurin. I might be forgetting one. And those are all guys that can play at this level and uh, potentially some of them at the next level. So those are good. And then I think uh, um, Nick Vanette and obviously Zeke is a big part of this game plan as well. Uh, Johnny Dixon health-wise good? Yeah, he's uh, just got to monitor him. He's got those darn knee issues, and they're not major. It's just tendonitis, and, and uh, I expect him to be full speed today. He's had a very good camp. Yeah, Urban, uh, in, in that regard, uh, what are you looking for from those receivers? Who, what are you looking for this week in terms of what will impress you about stepping up and being that guy or those guys? Great question. Attention to detail and, and, and uh, taking care of themselves. You know, we, uh, pr you know, we really watch closely their body weights, their hydration, how you handle yourself as a pro, and, and uh, how Paris Campbell handles himself. You know, right now I have Paris and Terry starting in special teams starting. And... Uh, Obviously, you know how we feel about those positions. So, uh, how they handle themselves in practice, and and uh, you know, Coach Mick, you know, he's in charge of all the sports performance. Are they at the body weights? Are they fully hydrated? Are they maximizing their time? And uh, those kind of kids are great kids, so I I think they're going to be ready to go. Hey, another thing uh, with Braxton, uh, you know, you talked last week or so about the routine of playing a hybrid back or being. You know, going to a place other than behind the guy that has the ball, <laughs> you know, for the snap and stuff. Do you see a more fluid guy now when he takes the yeah. field? What, what, what just jumps out at you about The last three days have been really fluid. And I think a lot of it's just his body's feeling good again after going through the what the heck is this. And that's the, the constant running that his body wasn't used to. So he looks like a H back now. Far left. Urban, uh, is it fair to say that this might be the only game where your team definitely would have the cycle, the motivational edge, having played this is the only team you lost to, and also how much of an advantage would that be? I'm referring to your the days when you had the SEC grind when you would play somebody who had beaten you. Well, I, I think, Bill, there's uh, there's some truth to that that there's a little nudge on everybody, you know, uh, around here because they beat us, uh, and really the way they beat us. You know, offensively right now, there's a lot of distaste for the way that thing happened. And that's not taken away from their personnel because I think they got excellent personnel, especially on defense. But the way that happened, it was not, uh, you know, we weren't, it was a, a lot of it was lack of preparation. Uh, good players that are, were uh, doing a scheme that our guys were not prepared for. So there's a, there's a big edge around here. And in the SEC days, you had a meat grinder every week. Was it a big edge to have? team that you had beaten the year before, especially coming into your place, maybe? I can't remember. Those brain cells have been <laughs> chewed up and spit out a long time ago. It's a meat grinder every, don't fool yourself, Bill. It's a meat grinder every week. Second row left, Lori. Coach, when you do go into a game 
and use two quarterbacks. How much of that do you hope to be scripted, and how much of that is done by feel on game? I don't know yet. We did it in, in uh, 2006. It was the only time we've really done it, and it was uh, it was both. We had scripted plays, but they were two different skill sets. So we'd say we get to this part of the field, we need this kind of a uh, momentum push. And Tim Tebow had the kind of personality that everything just got picked up. When you're kind of stagnant, he had the personality. I don't see that this way at all. So to answer your question, I don't know yet. And we still got some time to decide. I think it's going to be a lot of it's going to be in game. How is it going? And do we need a, uh, a change? You talk about Tim Tebow's leadership. JT was voted captain by his, his peers. What does that say about the quarterback competition, if anything? Well, the actual quarterback, it, it's, uh, it's a factor, but it's not the factor. Uh, the guy that's going to give us the best chance to move down the field is going to be the guy taking a snap. I don't, I'm not surprised. You know, Josh Pierre, I think, got the most votes. I think Taylor Decker got the second and JT got the third. Uh, Braxton got the fourth, and it was either Tyvis or who's the other one I'm missing? Jacoby. So um, the thing is, you know, Joe Hale had a bunch of snap, uh, uh Votes and Adolphus Washington. It's the most I've ever seen as far as spread out, as far as votes. That's how many good kids we have. But JT, that that uh, I got asked that question by some friends. Say, does that mean that doesn't? That means he's a captain, and uh, not necessarily going to take the first snap. Uh, front row left, Doug. Urban, are you open to the idea of playing two quarterbacks more than you were a couple months ago? Oh, uh, not sure yet. We're still still debating that. And is the only thing what gives this team the best chance to win, or is there something in there of guys deserving a chance to play, earning a chance to play, even if, you know, maybe. No, at this point, it's at that moment uh, who can, because they both won. I, I don't know JT's record, but it's pretty good. Cardell, I believe, 3 0. So uh, who gives us at that moment a chance to win? If, if the skill sets are similar, right? Mm -hmm. What would it be about giving both a chance? Performance to of practice, uh, accuracy, uh, leadership, toughness—all the things that you look for in a, in a quarterback. In a game, though, like a guy. Sure, absolutely. Guy's not looking so sharp. Let's put somebody else. Absolutely, in. could be weekly too. If he had a bad Tuesday practice, and you know Tuesdays are first to normal, third downs on Wednesday. If they have a bad Wednesday, and then you know that absolutely that's. And that, that's not uncommon. That's the same with the other positions as well. You have to show up every day and compete. Is there any part of that, doing that at quarterback, though, that could be not a great thing for the team? Or do you think that's, that would just push Oh, you mean about just naming a quarterback? No, I think the, the idea if, if, I mean, do you want, you know, people talk about if someone's looking over their shoulder, if they make a, right. they have a bad start to a game or a tough day of practice. Those are all things that we have to hit on the road. I'm not very experienced in this. And if you look, check the annals of college football history, and I'm sure that's happened. So I think I have to do what's best for the team at that moment. And that's you have two very good players that are very invested. What's the best chance of moving this team down the field and putting them in the end zone? That's kind of the mindset I've had right now. But I think that's uh, those things I'm constantly thinking about because I don't want players. And we try not to do that here. That's why we always talk about four to six A to B. Don't 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 worry about mistakes, man. Go as hard as you can, and we'll fix. Mis uh, mistakes are over. Uh, are fixed by great effort.